and an employee can put a package on it and then send it on its way, give it a little tap on the tuchus and then it goes. Welcome back my busy bunny, it's a too busy didn't know with me, go go Joe. This is the show where I take the best science, business, startup and technology news, tie it up into a little bow and present to you with the best stories so that you can be the most interesting person on the Zoom conversation in the Zoom room. Because there's no more water coolers, let's face it. Without you know, we're not going to the office, there's no more water coolers. But this week we've got all sorts of stuff. We got robotics, we got slime mold, there's some Bitcoin news, there's a self-driving bicycle, and my favorite at the end, we're gonna talk about nuclear reactors and some new technology to make the nuclear more safe. Let's get you caught up. So getting right into it, I get the begging out of the way right here at the beginning of the show. Please like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Send me to a friend. This is both a podcast and a visual show. So if you're listening on a podcast, know that you can go on YouTube, look up Too Busy, Didn't Know, TBDK, or Go Go Joe Show, and you can find it, and you'll see the visuals of all the cool stuff that I'm going to talk about. And if you're watching on YouTube, know that you can also find it as a podcast, so you can search on CastBox. Spotify, Pocket Casts, Acast, whatever your chosen podcast listening method is, you can find T- TBDK, Too Busy Didn't Know there. So let's jump right into it though with the first story and that is from Amazon. They unveiled two new robotic workers. So let's take a look here. Ernie here supposedly del- uh, delivers totes to employees. Ernie is this robot that I guess sucks out these totes and then it gives it to an employee to then inspect and then put on a conveyor belt. I don't know what the point is here. Amazon says that it's saving time, uh, but it's not necessarily replacing. I mean, it's not saving time. It's just making the working environment a little bit safer. But uh, for me, having this big old robot next to me, I don't, it doesn't feel safe, uh, even if the robot can view me and stop. I don't know if these robots, man, something's going to happen. I just know it. But let's talk about Bert. <laughs> Bert is a robot that can apparently self-drive around the warehouse. We can see here. It looks like a shelf with wheels. Uh, You can't see the wheels because there's a shield there uh, blocking your view, but it just looks like a shelf with wheels on it that's kind of just moving around by itself uh, in the in the, the warehouse, I guess. And an employee can put a package on it and then send it on its way, give it a little tap on a tuchus, and then it goes. One thing to note here in the video is a lot of these robotics use guidelines on the floor. If you've ever been in a robotics class, it's like Robots 101, you put these tape strips on the ground and then the robot will just follow it if it it uses like a light product uh, projection or sensor and then if it sees the end of the tape it just rewrites itself and continues going straight so you end up with a kind of a zigzaggy pattern and a lot of robots use this but this one does not it is apparently fully autonomous uh, and they want to start rolling this out so that employees don't have to make trips across the warehouse i guess because these warehouses get rather big but it just goes to show like how much of these tasks they're automating away from the people. Uh, and their reasoning is so that people can use their brains for critical thinking tasks. If I had to guess, it's actually because they need these things operating 24 hours a day and people just can't operate 24 hours a day as efficiently as robots. Uh, moving on to Bitcoin though, everyone's a favorite topic. Bitcoin just received a new update called Taproot. First significant update to Bitcoin since SegWit in 2017. Uh, What SigWit did, I don't remember, but yes, this is a big step forward. What it actually does is Taproot will outfit Bitcoin with a new signature scheme known as a Schnorr signature. This small adjustment to the Bitcoin code opens up new possibilities for privacy, multi-signature wallets and security, as well as scaling. And this will also unlock the ability for Bitcoin to really move into smart contracts, apparently. So that's the Taproot uh, update. It was very interesting because they have to get this this update approved with all the nodes. So it has to kind of creep along the network very slowly as everybody agrees that this update is okay until it gets finally hard-coded into the Bitcoin blockchain network. And speaking of crawling along, let's talk about this slime called P. polycephalum. And it's considered a network and it's that's because it can, it doesn't have any neurons like a brain. And it can still send information around its body and learn how to navigate its environment, find food, remember where food is, without actually having what we traditionally consider the mechanisms for intelligence. But it has intelligence. And it's making us rethink how 
thoughts happen and how life is defined, uh, which may actually help us find life out there in the universe. But let's look at this uh, this mold. It's super interesting. Uh, here we can see this mold is spreading along a, a flat surface. I'm, I'm guessing maybe this is under some sort of a microscope to help us see it a little bit better. Uh, you can see it's very slowly inching along. And then as it gets halfway across the way, it kind of like splits up and starts making almost like mold fingers or hands that become fingers uh, and, and like splitting itself up. And then also you can see as it's doing this, all of a sudden these veins kind of appear from nowhere, these, these tubes uh, within the mold. And it almost looks like cardiovascular tissue, meaning like heart tissue, it looks like it's beating and it's clearly sending some sort of liquid in these tubes and it's clearly doing something. And then also it looks like it dries out. So either the mold at the ends is, or the slime is still growing at the ends and so it's getting thinner um, or something else here is happening. But if you watch this video uh, on the YouTube, you'll definitely notice it looks like heart tissue. Uh, and a lot of the uh, scientists also said that this is like the brain, how it has this pulsing, which is sending liquid through these tubes or these veins in the slime mold. And uh, they think that the pulses have something to do with how it, how it learns as uh, when it encounters like sugar, which it really likes oat sugar, um, it starts pulsing more wildly than normal. And it they think that it's sending some sort of signal to the other parts of the mold that there's food over there and then it remembers that at those fingertips i guess that that's where the food was i'm guessing i'm not really sure i'm not a mold scientist but it's pretty fascinating uh, i had never seen this thing before apparently it can think apparently it can solve puzzles when they give it puzzles in the lab they can give it mazes and it remembers the co uh, correct way to get through mazes it also apparently solves this this problem called the traveling salesman problem more effectively than computers can uh and it has no no neurons, no brain to actually do this. It's very fascinating. You can look it up. I'll link in the description below. What do you think though about life? Is this alive? Would you consider this life or does it have to, in your mind, have consciousness, a brain, uh, or can it just be this, you know, intelligent mold? Another fascinating thing that is kind of like the slime mold where it's, it's kind of creeping along is this new self-healing concrete that actually uses carbon from the air to heal itself. It's pretty incredible and could actually really revolutionize buildings because it could not only create safer, better concrete that heals itself from cracks, but it could also combat global warming and carbon emissions, which is absolutely incredible. Uh, seen here on the screen, there is this control bit of concrete you can see here. Uh, and then they had a notched bit of concrete that had this uh, mixture, this special mixture that heals itself. And we can see on the right hand side over time, it eventually filled in the flaw. And then now it's just a solid piece of concrete. When the enzyme is added to the concrete powder, it helps the material turn CO2 into in the atmosphere into calcium carbonate crystals. Whenever a tiny crack forms, the calcium carbonate fills it in. A millimeter scale crack can be filled within a day, preventing a larger crack from forming. A similar process can also be used on cracks in traditional concrete. We spay, spray a solution that is composed of the enzyme, water, and calcium on old concrete that we can then blow CO2 and fill the cracks in minutes or use ambient CO2, which will take a little bit longer to heal the cracks. This is absolutely incredible. This is very cool. I get hyped up a lot on this show on cool stuff, but this is actually legit cool. Uh, and we can see here in this video, the self-healing concrete. So they took this concrete and I believe they immersed it under water so that we can see the process happening uh, a little bit better. And they somehow inject some carbon into the water or maybe there's already carbon in the water. Uh, but in a minute, you can see all these bubbles here start. Yeah, the liquid be, uh, is being pushed out as the, the hole is filled in. So these bubbles are forming uh, as the concrete is healing itself. Uh, and then there was a big cut in the middle as well that I believe at the end of the video has been fully healed, but yeah, it's all bubbling up as the, the holes are filling themselves in with this enzyme. It's pretty, pretty cool. So yeah, six hours later, uh, we can see here the crack on top is pretty much filled in and all the little holes were also totally filled in in just six hours. Really stinking cool. I'm, I'm very curious where this is gonna take us in the future, but I like that we're doing some biomimicry stuff. We're taking stuff from biology and applying it to other places uh, to heal uh, concrete. Uh, it's something a little bit more fun here, moving away from the tech stuff and science stuff, uh, or like high tech stuff. Uh, this guy made a self-balancing bike, uh, this Chinese guy on YouTube, uh, and I'll just play the video and we'll, we'll look at it. 
we can see here this this bike is self-balancing and self-driving which is a very tough problem to solve i mean a bike balancing itself i mean people have trouble themselves balancing on a bike uh, and now this guy's done it with uh coding and with sensors i think it's it's very cool uh what this guy has been able to accomplish and it seems like he's done it on his own uh with not a lot of help i'm sure that by day he's also doing some sort of coding uh can also navigate around objects uh you can see here how it sees the world it's uh navigating around some cars and stuff really cool also a little bit creepy that this bike is just rolling around on its own it's pretty cool and maybe it'll help people learn how to ride bikes or uh will turn people uh bikers into safer drivers i don't know although really bikers have to work, watch out for cars because it's the cars that are causing the problems with the bikers because the cars hit them and kill the bikers it happens all around the world and it's very very sad moving on though to windows 11 leaked online with some new features and updates and looks uh we can see here uh it has a more rounded look actually one interesting thing here this is from a twitter leak that you may notice is that they centered the icons at the bottom of the screen much like apple does so they moved from the left hand side focus and they moved all the icons and even the finder um, button into the center uh, which is really an interesting move. Also, there's more rounded edges on Windows. They're very square usually, and now they're finally embracing that modern rounded edge design to make us feel good. Uh, they also have, uh, it, yeah, you can see here he's on Windows 11. The notification center also has these rounded edges. It looks a little bit smoother. Uh, and then also one fun thing is that it has a new startup sound, uh, which we should listen to now. Hmm. It was really simple. Let's hear it again. Boom, boom, boom. As you guys know, who watched this, who watched the Go Go Joe show? I'm really into sound, sound design. I, I always talk about dubstep and the sound design. I do reviews. Uh, my review of this sound is actually it's very pleasant, honestly. It reminds me a lot of the Xbox uh, sound for some reason. It's very short and sweet. Or even the next, the Netflix. Doo -doo. This one is boom, boom, boom. We've got three little little things. Uh, Apple has the go, like the almost <laughs> savior holy sound. Uh, I like it. Whoever designed it, shout out to them because it's a good sound. Uh, and you'll probably be hearing more of it if you embrace that Windows 11 life. And the last story here is probably the most controversial one. We're talking about nuclear energy. Now, there's a lot of mixed feelings and emotions around nuclear energy. A lot of people don't like it because it's, it sounds scary. We've got nuclear meltdowns. And there's other people on the science side of things that say nuclear energy is actually the cleanest form of energy production that we can have. And then it is very safe. And now there's a type of nuclear reactor that's been around since the 1950s that doesn't get a lot of talk but is actually a little bit safer than the big ones that you think of when, you, when you're like thinking of Homer Simpson working at the nuclear power plant. And these are called molten salt reactors, and they're a little bit safer. And there's a new company out of, I believe, Copenhagen that has designed a much smaller nuclear molten salt reactor with nice safety features uh, to bring this nuclear energy to the market with this clean energy production. Let's look at it a little bit. We'll explain what's going on. I tried to study so that I can break it down. Firstly, these new reactors, uh, they use nuclear fuel that's mixed into fluoride salts. The combination is liquid above uh, 932 degrees Fahrenheit or 500 degrees Celsius, allowing it to flow through, through the reactor, which operates at near atmospheric pressures. Uh, this liquid salt functions as a coolant for the nuclear fuel, replacing the high pressure water cooling in older reactor designs. But if this fuel is exposed to the air instead of venting explosively as steam, like traditional nuclear coolants, this instead acts like lava and it solidifies into rock. Yes, this rock is radioactive and no, you shouldn't have a picnic on it, but it's not a cloud of radioactive gas or radioactive steam that kind of spreads out across the land and just melts everything or makes it radioactive. Um, it's a solid rock that can be identified uh, easily with Geiger counters and then disposed of and removed. Uh, and it's if it falls into the sea, it's also uh, much safer than uh, this steam escaping into the sea as well. And we can see here on the screen what this uh, molten or this yeah molten salt reactor looks like uh the left side is the full one and you can see a human being for scale here uh it looks like it's about 
four humans tall, <laughs> whatever that amounts to, uh, 24 feet tall, I guess. Uh, and the, you can see the inside of the core here with all these little tubes and stuff that have the molten lava fluoride nuclear liquid substance running through it. But there's another safety mechanism, which I thought was pretty interesting. It says, secondly, if the temperature starts getting out of control for any reason, uh, then there's a frozen salt plug at the bottom of the reactor, and it's the first thing that will melt. So uh, there's this round bit at the bottom. This is apparently some sort of frozen salt plug. So if it starts heating up, it melts, and then it just kind of dumps out the uh, reactor core into a series of cooled drainage tanks underneath, which then I'm sure they harden into rocks, and then we just have rock already encased in a tank in a, in a, in a tank. Uh, as someone who doesn't really know a lot about nuclear energy, uh, it, it, it made sense to me. It also sounds a lot safer uh, and more productive, honestly, and easier to talk, to talk about for somebody uh, that is afraid of nuclear technology. With these safety mechanisms in place, just the, the frozen salt plug, I was like, yeah, that's cool. The CEO did uh, want to point this out, and I thought it was an interesting statement, so I'm going to read it. He said, we're not reducing the likelihood of an accident to zero. There will be accidents. Man, do I respect the shit out of a man who will admit there will be accidents. We should avoid them as much as we can, but there will be accidents. Yes, baby, there will be accidents. Hopefully, there'll be a lot of accidents because we will have a lot of these reactors. What we do instead of reducing the likelihood is reduce the consequence of the worst disasters. For even acts of war, where you actually bomb the reactor, the consequence there is that this fluoride salt will flow out of the reactor or explode out of the reactor and just lie on the field where it was bombed. It'll solidify, and now you shouldn't go out into that field. In fact, you should actually keep at least 10 to 20 feet of distance, but you can go there with Geiger counter and clean it up uh, with the uh, right protection or even robotics. It's wildly expensive, but you can do it. Uh, and that changes the fundamental safety profile of the technology. And in doing so, we change the cost, which again, in turn, changes the business model, making this an attractive investment for the future. I think it's great. I would love to see more nuclear power. I know that I, in the past, have been afraid of nuclear power because you have these images of Hiroshima and nuclear explosions and Chernobyl uh, in your mind. But if we can do stuff like this that is a little bit safer, uh, but just as effective or even more effective, uh, I think that's incredible. So I hope that uh, Seaborg is the name of the company. Seaborg uh, takes off. They're trying to build these outside of cities, actually in the water. Uh, they want to make more of like an oil rig type uh, setup where they build it uh, over water. And then that way, if anything happens as well, it just dumps the rock into the water and then we don't have to worry about it uh, or I guess clean it up uh, in the same way that we would if it were in the middle of a field. Uh, we still may have to do some sort of cleanup uh, or deactivation of the radioactive material, but uh, I don't even know if that's possible. So that's been uh, today's Too Busy. Didn't know. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new uh, that you can then pass along to a friend so that you can sound smart and informed, I guess. If you like my content, again, uh, hit that subscribe button, mash the bell, and send me to a friend and clip out a short uh, if you could. Uh, it's very tough for me to know what was interesting and what wasn't interesting. And so I'll break it down to you guys to say, hey, if you find something funny, cut it out and share it with uh, yeah, social media and tag me in it. Uh, that would be awesome. Uh, thanks again for watching. That's been TBDK. Uh, if you like it, subscribe and come back next week uh, to learn more about what you missed out around business, science, technology and startups and follow me on GoGo Joe. Until then. I hope you learned something good because you know it. I love you.